Good morning, bonjour. Uh, thank you, Christian, for that introduction and for welcoming us to this amazing place. Je suis très heureux uh, d'être accompagné par mon collègue, uh, le ministre François Philippe Champagne. This is a really exciting announcement today. It's about jobs, it's about leading extraordinary advancements in technology, and it's about Canadian ambition and know how. It's about Canadian leadership in quantum computing. And as many of you know, I get really excited by quantum computing. Uh, what's happening here is cutting edge, not just in Canada, but around the world. Uh, and uh, because I know media will have all sorts of important things to ask me about, I'm going to make sure that I explain uh, what, uh, what's going on in here within the body of my questions, unless you really want to ask me a question about can quantum computing. Uh, we're here at Xanadu, a made-in-Canada company that is doing world-leading quantum computing. They're building the computer of the future. In fact, they just recently achieved something called quantum advantage with a machine that can compute faster than the fastest smartphone, faster than the fastest supercomputer in the world. For example, if you gave it a specific problem to a classical supercomputer, it might take 9,000 years for them to solve it. The uh, quantum computer can do it in less than a second. That's the kind of computing power uh, that is being generated here that's going to transform uh, the way our world works. But it's really no surprise uh, that Canada's leading on this, uh, and as uh, we're seeing what's special about Xanadu is that they're making this technology accessible to people and companies around the world. But Canada's been making waves in quantum for decades. Notre gouvernement veut aider à ce qu'on garde cet avantage. C'est pour ça qu'on a commencé l'année en lançant la stratégie quantique nationale. Au Canada, on a une communauté quantique unique en son genre, fondée sur des compétences et des entrepreneurs novateurs. Nos entrepreneurs voient le potentiel et ils veulent qu'on passe au stade de la recherche à celui de l'application dans le monde réel. Now, quantum computing is still a burgeoning technology and we want Canada to continue to lead in its development. The research that's been done in Canada for years has been extraordinary. But of course, getting that into practical applications, getting that to be able to be accessed by innovators, by entrepreneurs, by businesses across Canada and around the world, is the next big challenge. But our quantum strategy is built on three strong pillars. The first is research, which Canada has long been leading the way in at our universities. The second is talent, which we have in spades thanks to our well-educated homegrown workforce, but also our ability to attract highly skilled workers from around the world, including through immigration policies like the global talent stream. A number of years ago, about six years ago or so, uh, we heard clearly from high-tech businesses across the country that if uh, we could accelerate their ability to bring in top engineers, top researchers from around the world, they'd expand and grow their base in Canada. So we created the global talent stream uh, that allows people to come in in four, six weeks, uh, depending on how, uh, how quickly we can get it done. Uh, and get to work right away. And that advantage of bringing in some of the top minds from around the world is exactly what has been able uh, to lead this, uh, this quantum revolution here in Canada. And of course, the third pillar is commercialization, so that those leading companies can scale up, create good jobs and economic growth uh, that benefits all Canadians, which, of course, brings me to why I'm here today. Canada has a tremendous, one-of-a-kind, innovation ecosystem that is finding ways to bring quantum technology to market. That's exactly what Xanadu is doing. So today, the federal government is announcing an important investment of about $40 million in Xanadu quantum technologies. This will help them build the world's first photonic-based fault-tolerant quantum computer and scale up their business. Ex support an expected 530 good, high-paying jobs and ensure that Canada continues to punch above its weight when it comes to advancements in this tech. The quantum computer Xanadu is building runs off an advanced computer chip that literally computes at the speed of light. And the reason for that is it actually uses light to function. The same way we have fiber optics that uh, you know, manage all our telecommunications, uh, they're actually running light 
uh, through the computer chips uh, that allows for both high speed and high efficiency uh, crunching of the data. Like I said, we're at the forefront of this technology and Xanadu is in competition to build the first fault-free quantum computer. And I've said that a couple of times. Why is it so important that we talk about a fault-free quantum computer? Uh, you know, we don't really worry about the fault-freeness of our laptops, of our regular computers. Why is it important in quantum? Well, quantum is uh, the holding of simultaneous states at the same time. And quantum functions, quantum waves, are constantly collapsing. And if quantum wave collapses, that introduces an error in the system. So you have to do it multiple times and create uh, a linkage so there is redundancy to be able to keep moving with the, the calculations. It's inherent in the nature of quantum that they're collapsing. So having that fault free will actually allow you to do uh, the computations that are actually necessary. It's really, really exciting stuff. The other thing that's really exciting that they've done is uh, they figured out using photonics, so it's using light in the chips, uh, to do most of the part of the computing that's done here uh, without having to be cooled down to absolute zero. Uh, the cryogenic freezing of most of the quantum computers uh, is a huge cost and a huge burden and really challenging for when you're trying to develop them and experiment them. Uh, so by focusing on only uh, keeping the quantum, uh, the, the photonic sensors down uh, near minus 273 uh, degrees Celsius, you can actually have quantum computers that'll fit in standard server racks uh, that businesses and companies use around the world. The idea of being able to package in quantum computing alongside your traditional computers is where that leverage is going to go. And what Xanadu is doing is world leading and extraordinarily exciting for the future of quantum computing, quantum computing available uh, to, uh, to businesses around the world. Xanadu, as qu'il faut. L'entreprise s'est associée à d'autres grandes entreprises, universités du Canada et du monde entier, comme Harvard et MIT. Il y a une compétition mondiale présentement pour développer le premier ordinateur quantique sans erreur. C'est une technologie qui va changer les choses de manière extraordinaire et on le fait ici au Canada. Successful quantum computing has a huge potential for our economy and for people. Think about all the trial and error that goes into developing a new medicine, for example. These computers can do complex problem solving that simulates experiments, not only saving costs, but also developing life-saving treatments faster than ever. They can also analyze logistics, which will help us build more efficient and resilient supply chains. They can also help us model climate change, which will help us build a safer future. Ces technologies vont contribuer à définir l'avenir. Elles vont permettre au Canada de devenir un leader mondial et de faire croître notre économie. On estime que dans deux décennies, l'industrie quantique canadienne va représenter près de 140 milliards de dollars et plus de 200 000 emplois. So as governments, we need to keep looking to where the puck is going. Strategic investments like today will set us up for success in the years and in the decades to come. This creates opportunities today and makes sure we're all building the economy of the future so there are opportunities for future generations of Canadians. This is what building an economy that works for all Canadians looks like. It's what it's about and it's what we're going to keep doing. Merci beaucoup. Je suis très content maintenant de céder la parole au ministre François-Philippe Champagne. François-Philippe. Good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's good to be back, I should say, uh, to Xanadu. You know, we were touring and seeing all the employees, and you should see the smile on the face of everyone. Uh, Prime Minister, always good to be with you when we're talking about uh, quantum. I must say I'm happy that you're here because, uh, as you can see, the, the Prime Minister has a lot of passion when it comes to quantum. We've seen your interest, and we've seen it time and time again. But also, uh, I want to say to Canadians and, and to everyone who's watching, um, if we are here today, it's thanks to the Prime Minister. Uh, his vision around science, technology, and innovation uh, is allowing us to have made significant steps in order to achieve what we're seeing today. And yesterday, as I was flying to Toronto, someone was saying the research of today is the economy of tomorrow. And when I think about quantum, when I think about Xanadu, uh, obviously uh, you exemplified that. Christian, uh, thank you for hosting us 
again, I must say. Uh, we almost know the name of uh, most of your employees by now on a first name basis. And, and you know, I talk about you around the world, almost to everyone. I'm so proud of what you're doing. And I'll say a big secret now. I've given your personal phone number to about hundreds of CEOs around the world, and I'll continue. So uh, we're very proud of what you're doing because when people are talking to me about the future, and they're talking to me about what quantum is about, and an example of Canada's leadership, obviously Christian uh, was an extraordinary leader uh, comes to mind, and we're doing that. But I want to say thank you to the whole team, and I think you would join me in the Prime Minister here at, at Xanadu. The company has grown exponentially with high-skilled jobs. And it's really thanks to your talent, expertise, and know-how uh, that we can have uh, investments like that today. We've seen uh, touring with the Prime Minister this morning, people coming from uh, about everywhere around the world, I would say, coming here because they know that something is happening in Toronto. They know that something is happening in Canada. And it, it, um, it's good to see that Canada is still that big magnet for talent, uh, where people are thinking about quantum. They know that the future is here. And, and I know our colleague, uh, the MP for University of Rosedale, Minister Freeland, uh, is giving greetings to everyone here. She would have liked to be with us. And I know how passionate she is also about science. Um, the Prime Minister said it. This is an exciting day for Canada. Uh, it's also an exciter, exciting day for quantum. Uh, a few days ago, as the Prime Minister said, we announced Canada's national quantum strategy. And today we're announcing a major investment in Xanadu, a, a quantum leader and a Canadian champion. And you don't need to take it from me, but if you talk to people around the world about quantum, whether in Washington, in, in Germany, in Korea, in Japan, you see that the name of Xanadu resonates. As the Prime Minister said just last June, uh, Xanadu achieved what is called quantum computational advantage, or others would call that quantum supremacy. And, and as the Prime Minister said, this was really uh, quite of an achievement. It was celebrated, I think, in nature even, in the magazine as a Canadian champion breaking ground. And I would say that's why you're seeing so much attention and attraction. Uh, Xanadu just refinanced, and you see investors from around the world uh, wanting to back Canadian technology. C'est toute là de la puissance de l'informatique quantique, faire en un rien de temps ce que l'on pensait auparavant impossible à réaliser. Dans le fond, ce qu'ils font, c'est qu'ils rendent l'impossible possible. Et c'est ça euh, l'intéressant de la technologie quantique. Comme le premier ministre le disait, c'est qu'on peut faire des choses euh, en une fraction de seconde, ce qu'un super ordinateur aurait pris plusieurs années à faire. This is a technology that is making the impossible possible. And Xanadu technology has the potential to really be a game changer in not one industry, but about every industry. Uh, whether you're talking about cyber security, and that is really top of mind for our government when it comes to cyber, whether it's about drug discovery, you've seen that we have attracted significant investment. I can think of uh, the mRNA vaccine and Moderna uh, coming on our shore. I can think about the EV batteries. I'll give you one of the best kept secret in the automotive world today is that Xanadu is the only company in the world which has a quantum computer working on battery chemistry. So no wonder where the name of Xanadu is everywhere around the world, because if you want to have the most efficient battery, quantum is, is a leap forward in terms of R&D. So I would say what you're seeing is that is the potential is quite infinite to uh, do things that, that are probably difficult to even imagine, I would say, Prime Minister. Think about climate change. Prototyping is another place where people are saying, because with quantum, you can prototype new products. Comme on disait à la fin de point d'innovation, les technologies quantiques vont permettre d'améliorer de façon importante. On parlait des moyens de communication, de l'informatique, la production d'énergie, la médecine, mais aussi les prévisions climatiques. Dans le fond, ce qu'on voit, c'est que les possibilités en matière quantique sont infinies. Et plus encore, les technologies quantiques vont servir également de tremplin économique. Le Premier ministre le disait, on parle de plusieurs euh, milliers d'emplois, on parle d'investissements dans l'ordre de milliards, et c'est pour ça que le Canada investit pour être un leader dans le domaine. C'est donc logique de faire progresser la place du Canada dans ce secteur qui est en pleine expansion, mais je vous dirais aussi que c'est assez stratégique euh, de faire ça. C'est pour cela que la semaine dernière, vous l'avez vu, j'ai présenté la première, la toute première stratégie quantique du Canada, Et la stratégie que vous avez vue est dotée d'une enveloppe d'environ 360 millions de dollars pour optimiser la recherche, mais aussi euh, commercialiser des innovations comme on le fait ici ce matin chez Xanadu. So our national quantum strategy is about research talent, but also commercialization. And there's been a lot of talk about that recently, but this morning is a great example. The 40 million we're putting uh, is going to be uh, supporting a project of more than 178 million dollars and is going to create hundreds of high-skilled jobs in a key sector of our economy. 
and that will put Canada or continue to put Canada at the forefront of, of quantum. And this is about jobs. This is about opportunities, about growth. This is, um, and the beauty of all of that is that Canadians will reap the benefit of that. So I would say to all the workers and the hundreds who will very shortly, I think, join Xanadu, uh, you're helping to guide Canada on its way to becoming a world leader in the economy of the 21st century. So in conclusion, I would say let's seize the moment, let's be ambitious, like I always say, and let us be at the center of the next big technological shift that we're seeing, which is quantum technology. Merci tout le monde. Je passe la parole, monsieur le Happy now to take some questions from media. Thank you, Prime Minister. Merci, le Premier Ministre. Um, we have 20 minutes for questions from media. One question, one follow-up. Nous avons 20 minutes pour les questions des médias. Une question, une suivi. And we will begin with uh, the logic. Nous avons commencé avec la logic. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, last May, President Joe Biden ordered all federal departments and agencies to make their systems quantum safe. Uh, your government has announced no such measures. Why not? Canada, with uh, the CSC, it has some of the strongest cyber defense capabilities in the world. And uh, as you've seen now, we have some of the most advanced research into uh, quantum technology and quantum innovations. Uh, we will continue to ensure that we're supporting our communication security establishment to uh, keep uh, everyone safe from a range of cyber intrusions and cyber attacks. There's always much more to do, but we're doing that work. Uh, and Prime Minister, the national quantum strategy that you've referenced today directs all $35 million of its procurement funding to a program called Innovative Solutions Canada. That program has spent less in three years than you promised to spend in one. So why give it responsibility for something that's so important to a sector that you say is so important? Uh, we know that there are tremendous opportunities to invest uh, in extraordinary innovation like companies like, in companies like Xanadu. Uh, we're going to continue to make sure that Canada is at the forefront of uh, quantum technology research and applications and, and, uh, and commercialization. That means that there are going to be more good jobs for Canadians. Uh, we uh, stand by our quantum strategy because we know how important it is to be building technologies of the future and making sure Canadians uh, are at the forefront of these innovations around the world. And that's why we're going to continue to invest. Next question. To Mordorani from the Globe and Mail. Uh, numerous experts, including several people who have worked for your government, are now pointing out that the billions of dollars your government has spent on its innovation agenda has not demonstrably improved Canada's tech sector, Prime Minister, or moved indicators such as GDP growth or business investment in R&D. What is your government planning to do to address this? Uh, despite what people say, we continue to be committed to a high-tech future for Canada. We know that whether it's uh, leading on e AI, leading on quantum technology, uh, leading on a range of extraordinary innovative solutions that the world is going to need, uh, Canadian researchers are the best in the world because they're drawn from everywhere around the world. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to stand by our investments in research. We're going to continue to make sure uh, that uh, Innovative technologies like quantum computing are uh, continuing to evolve and become more available to companies across Canada and around the world. The impact that quantum computing can have uh, from automotive and battery design to modeling climate change uh, to uh, understanding uh, the, what the impact uh, uh, new uh, life-saving medicines and technologies can have is something we're going to continue to invest in. Uh, there's always more to do, but I'm glad to be here today to announce $40 million of investment uh, in this world-leading Canadian company. Switching gears a little bit, Prime Minister, the Globe and Mail reported this morning that the two-person company which received the most arrive can contract work actually subcontracted that, uh, sub that work to other companies, including multinationals like BDO or KPMG. Why is the federal government paying millions to a two-person company to then hire other companies to do their work? Can't the public service hire the companies directly or perform IT work in-house? That's exactly the question that I just asked of the public service. Uh, obviously, this is uh, a practice that seems highly uh, illogical and uh, inefficient, and uh, I have made sure that the uh, clerk of the Privy Council is looking into procurement practices to make sure uh, that we're getting value for money and that we're doing things in a smart and logical way. Uh, of course, uh, during the pandemic, speed was at an essence, helping people quickly was at an essence, uh, but there are principles that we should make sure uh, are, uh, are sound moving forward. Okay. Um, C'est une question que j'ai posée moi-même à la greffière du conseil privé. 
pourquoi euh, est-ce que nous avions fonctionné de cette façon-là. Je comprends que dans la pandémie, tout devait euh, bouger rapidement, on devait développer des choses, des solutions rapides pour les Canadiens, mais en même temps, on a des questions au niveau de, de, de l'approvisionnement de ces, de ces contrats. Euh, et donc, euh, on va faire des suivis pour s'assurer que tout est fait en bonne et due forme et que les structures qu'on a mises en place sont les bonnes pour l'avenir. Good morning, Prime Minister Mal Hamidou, the Canadian Press. Um, Germany's Foreign Minister uh, Annalena Baerbock, uh, Baerbock uh, said over the weekend that if Poland wants to send uh, a Liber II battle tanks to Ukraine, Germany would not stand in the way. What does this change about the, um, the way the, Canada, the process, the Canada, the decision-making process in Canada when it comes to supporting Ukraine? Is Canada now prepared to send tanks to, to Ukraine as the country has asked? Canada has been one of the countries around the world that has been the most steadfast friend and supporter of Ukraine. We've sent uh, humanitarian aid, we've sent uh, financial and economic aid, uh, and we've sent sp significant uh, military aid uh, to Ukraine in uh, defending its territory against uh, the illegal and illegitimate Russian invasion. Uh, we will continue to be there for Ukraine. We have regular conversations with uh, the Ukrainian leadership and the Ukrainian military to make sure that we are sending them exactly what they need as quickly as possible, uh, and we're going to continue to do that. We have uh, nothing to announce today, but we'll continue to look at how best Canada can help. Okay. Uh, le Canada est un des pays qui uh, appuie le plus uh, l'Ukraine depuis les tout débuts, que ce soit avec de l'aide humanitaire, de l'aide financière et économique, ou bien uh, de l'aide militaire directement. Nous allons continuer d'être là pour le peuple ukrainien pendant qu'ils défendent uh, leur pays uh, et nos valeurs démocratiques contre cette invasion russe. Euh, nous allons continuer de travailler directement avec eux pour euh, voir ce qu'on peut fournir de nécessaire euh, qu ils, dont ils ont besoin, mais nous n'avons pas d'annonce à faire aujourd'hui là-dessus. Um, how much closer are you to asking the Supreme Court on Air France for, uh, on the preemptive use of uh, the notwithstanding clause? And uh, are you closer to ask Mr. Lamiti to go ahead on this? Um, I've been crystal clear on this for many, many years. I do not think any provinces should be proactively, preemptively using the notwithstanding clause. What they're doing is suspending fundamental rights and freedoms and preventing the courts from even being to, able to weigh in on that. As a government, we will always stand up for people's fundamental rights and freedoms. Uh, we've committed uh, that we are going to uh, engage at the Supreme Court uh, in the current case on uh, C20 on Bill 21, uh, and we're going to continue to look at uh, the best ways to make sure that right across the country, every Canadian has their fundamental rights and freedoms protected. Okay. Uh, J'ai toujours été très très clair. Uh, je ne crois pas que c'est une bonne idée que quiconque uh, à n'importe quel palier de gouvernement, n'importe où dans notre pays, suspendent les droits fondamentaux des Canadiens de façon à empêcher la Cour même de se prononcer là-dessus. En tant que gouvernement, on va toujours être là pour défendre les libertés fondamentaux de, euh, fondamentales de tous les Canadiens. Euh, c'est ce que j'ai toujours dit, c'est ce qu'on va continuer à faire. Euh, comme j'ai dit, euh, on va intervenir à la Cour suprême euh, dans le cas euh, de la loi 21. Euh, nous allons... Euh, continuer de toujours être là pour défendre euh, les droits fondamentaux des Canadiens. Euh, Yannick Leplage pour Radio-Canada. Est-ce que vous pourriez détailler un petit peu comment cet encadrement-là avec la, la, la Cour suprême pourrait prendre forme et aussi un peu le temps que ça pourrait prendre, quand est-ce qu'on pourrait voir des actions euh, concrètes être prises? Écoutez, euh, en tant que gouvernement, les Canadiens s'attendent de moi et du gouvernement qu'on soit là pour défendre les libertés fondamentales. Euh, C'est quelque chose euh, que les Canadiens prennent très au sérieux. On est en train de voir euh, des moments où les libertés fondamentales sont sous attaque un peu à travers le monde. Et en tant que gouvernement, les Canadiens savent qu'on va toujours être là pour défendre leurs droits et leurs libertés. Euh, on s'est déjà prononcé sur le fait euh, qu'on allait euh, participer au renvoi, à la, euh, participer à, à, à la Cour suprême euh, dans le cas de la loi 21. Euh, C'est pas nouveau ça. Euh, 
Euh, J'ai dit bien souvent que je déplore quand les provinces, quelle que soit la province euh, qui utilise la clause non obstant de façon pré euh, préventive pour suspendre les libertés fondamentales sans pouvoir avoir recours à la Cour. Euh, je pense que c'est pas une bonne chose de, de faire. Euh, mais évidemment, euh, c'est une position que je prends avec toutes les provinces, mais c'est pas une question de, du fédéral contre les provinces, c'est une question de s'assurer qu'on est là pour défendre les libertés fondamentales de tout le monde. Vos relations avec les provinces semblaient s'améliorer dans les dernières semaines. Est-ce que vous craignez que ces mesures-là, avec la clause dérogatoire, ça pourrait envenimer les choses? Non. Euh, je pense qu'on a démontré qu'on euh, peut avancer sur des enjeux qui sont importants pour les Canadiens en travaillant en étroite collaboration avec toutes les provinces. Euh, il va certainement avoir des enjeux sur lesquels on est en désaccord, mais ça va toujours se faire dans le respect et euh, dans, selon, selon les, euh, les principes et les lois qui, euh, qui régissent notre, notre pays. Thank you. Uh, Michelle Song, CBC News. Um, do your comments about the use of the notwithstanding clause endanger your health care negotiations? And can you answer in English and French, please? I just answered it in French, but I'm happy to answer it in English as well. Uh, the fact is, we will always stand up for Canadians' fundamental rights. Um, this is a principle that this government has. Defending Canadians' rights and freedoms is something I have never backed off on, and it's not aimed at the provinces or even at one province specifically. It's a principle that this government stands by. I will always defend people's fundamental rights and freedoms. That's something that is understood and expected even by my provincial counterparts. But as I've de demonstrated many times, we're also able to work together on areas we agree, whether it be on economic investments and growth or whether it be on health care. Uh, I know Canadians need uh, us to come together to solve uh, health care uh, for the medium and long term, and that's exactly what we're working on with, uh, with, Canadian, with, uh, with premiers right now. We're going to continue to work collaboratively on the things that Canadians expect us to do. You, famous, you famously said a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. Why did the government fight to not bring back four Canadian citizens detained in Syria back to Canada? Will you now follow a court order telling you to do so? Um, the court ruling just came down on Friday, I believe, and we're looking at it carefully. Uh, obviously, uh, making sure we're defending Canadians' safety and security is always going to be a priority for us, uh, and will continue to be.